self-recognition and self-awareness. What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? How do I collaborate with others? And there does seem to be a convergence of the future of learning and the future of work. And Lisa, this has been something you've been very focused on. How, how do we close that loop? Yeah, I think it's an interesting thing. I think in terms of technology being at a technology conference, um, one of the things that's actually going to come out of it that's very important is actually the intersection between our human skills and our tactile skills and, and the, what we would call transversal skills. How do we educate, educate those? How do we measure those? Um, how do we um, deliver those skills on a scalable level? Um, and never before have they been so important because technology doesn't innovate, we do. Um, a machine just doesn't do what it does, we actually program that. Um, and we're now working in an entirely different framework um, of work. Um, so that means we've got a completely different set of what we call the underpinning or transversal skills. And I've spent six years doing an international mapping um, of all the nations that have got a whole set of these transversal skills. And they're very common. I mean, we've got resilience, we've got creativity, we've got entrepreneurship. Um, you know, we've got agility, we've got flu fluidity. They are not things that we get in our curriculum at school. They are, in fact, things that teachers can't um, even educate or learn um, or teach to students. So how do we do that? Because they're the skills that are vitally important for us to be able to engage in the world that we're working in now. What does our job look like? How is it, how is it defined? Um, you know, when do we work? How do we work? So having those skill sets is, is going to be vitally important. And it is a connection and an inter intersection between the potentials of technology to do what we need it to do, but allow us the freedoms to still be human and to interact. And, and we actually now very much so need to strengthen the capacity of those skills, right down to you know tactile things like learning, you know, using books. Um, I was at a conference recently where somebody said, "Well, you know, is is blockchain and AI and all the things we do going to mean that um, uh, our universities are defunct?" Absolutely no. But what it does mean is we can change their business models and incorporate the values that we have from that learning into our workforce, um, and that's some of the key things. Yeah, so I mean, it's a cliche at this point that we measure what we value um, and vice versa, but how are we going to be able to measure these very sort of um, nebulous things, or at least historically nebulous things? I think it's a very, a very interesting concept that Nicole said. So when we're talking about um, learning, if you like, generally learning is, you know, a shift in knowledge, skills and attitude broadly. Um, and, but how do we measure and assess the, the capacity of the human body to interact? Well, there are ways. This is where technology is extraordinary. So as Craig and I would know, we're working on a project at the moment using AR, VR and AI to not only deliver learning, but to assessment capture those things. So we can actually assessment capture um, change of tone of voice, we can get change of heart rate, we can get change of look and eye, we can get, we can get the change in, um, just tones on our language and some of the um, you know, covert behaviours that we have, we can actually use that technology to capture that. Until we can capture it, we can't measure it. So people forget that learning is not just information. Um, learning has to be captured, <coughs> measured and have a goal. Otherwise, we don't even know that we've had a shift in those um, things. So it's very important. So if we're going to, well, that's with technology is extraordinary in that, in that space, to be able to use AR, VR experiences to capture that. We can't do that in our normal assessment processes. That also gives us the ability to scale the learning. And yes. until we do that, we won't achieve it. And it's critically important. Excellent. So, so in thinking about schools and I think at work, we're, we're kind of, we have an opportunity to, to remove constraints. And a lot of the constraints, um, have to do with, um, in terms of people, who are the people around us? And, and do you see the importance of geography moving forward? Let's go throw this open to anybody. But the importance of geography and what the, the actual dynamic of working with others looks like uh, fundamentally changing going forward. Anyway. Uh, yeah, look, abs absolutely. Um, you know, we were having this conversation before that, um, uh, obviously I'm Australian, so I'm uh, moving to the other side of the world. So my, my work day is a 24 hour day anywhere in the world at any time. Um, you know, presenting internationally at, a, at a, a conference in London via Zoom on the screen, 
in my bedroom, half dressed in my pyjamas, half looking fantastic on the top half, um, having an intelligent conversation. That's my work day. That's my experience. I'm working with people at any one time from any continent in the world. I don't have an office. It's wherever I have internet, wherever my computer is, wherever I am, wherever my colleagues are and wherever we engage. But what that means is, our, our, what is our work? Where's our, where's our office? Uh, where's our, where's our, um, you know, um, our place uh, in life? So it's, it's, it's extremely difficult. And it also means that we have, there are some things we need to be careful of and watch, but it also means that we're shifting a generation that doesn't work like we do. So they're entrepreneurial skills in many ways, but it is also the way, of, way we work. So the world is our opportunity. We cannot say that we're a globalised economy if we're not working with the world. And technology, again, is important because that's connected us, good, bad or indifferent. Um, the LinkedIn's, the Facebook's, all our social medias, they have enabled these events. Without them, we didn't have them. And I, I've lived in Australia for you know, all my life and it really wasn't until we got technology engagement that you know, other nations could engage. Go. <laughs> so, um, so my background is in video games, and I was in video games for 14 years, and the last thing I did was operate at World of Warcraft China. And so I actually think work and learning are going to look a lot like games. And, um, and with that, you know, what I think will happen is that the learning interfaces and the working interfaces will function very much like massively multiplayer games. And then, you know, the way that we learn human interaction skills, I call it a pearl necklace, where you have a very talented human whose ability to teach, to em emote, um, like Lior, who was here earlier, like what a talented human. So it's like a pearl necklace where you have these talented humans connected by a string of technology while you move from one experience with a talented human through a technology-enabled platform to another experience with a talented human. And that will be how we learn. And for that, we don't have to have advanced general intelligence for that. You know, we don't have to have her or you know, something like that for that. We could do that now with the talented humans and the technology that we have today. It's called a quest line. And, and, and I would like to add on, on, on that topic that from, um, from a startup perspective, that means that uh, from the get-go, uh, you set up the values of the company, uh, you understand that culturally uh, you will have people in the company that, I mean, I, I've been doing all my, 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 my work in cross borders. so being in the US and being a US citizen now and French also, uh, I, I really see that it's very important to embrace uh, the, those value and, and to find a common ground for everyone working in your companies. That also means uh, um, putting in place uh, all ends meetings so that everyone gets the same level of information and, um, and you can get all the team involved and, and people on the same pace. Uh, and I think it's very important. Uh, you have to start that from the beginning because when you have like 20, 25 people in the company, and if, if you didn't start that with uh, three or four people, at, uh, for instance, then it's, it's super complicated to put. So I'm looking around the audience, it seems to be on, on the younger side. Um, many of you clearly have learned a lot of these things uh, at some point uh, that has made you entrepreneurial or that has helped you become adept at some of these things. But, but a clear challenge that, that you know, I'm interested in is in the French school system, for example, this is not you know, what, what it looks like. Uh, and the same is true 